the inferior surface of the brain has few important sulci and gyri, attachment of cranial nerves and also area referred to as base of the brain. Fine. So when you are asked to describe the structure of inferior surface, first describe what is inferior surface, it is present between what borders, then what are the sulci and gyri present in it, then what are the structures present or that form the base of the brain and briefly describe the attachment of cranial nerves. Fine. This is the entire inferior surface of the brain. It is present between two borders. What is this border? Infero medial border. And what is this border? Infero lateral border. Fine. So inferior surface of the brain in the area of the cerebral hemisphere that is present between the infero medial border medially and infero lateral border laterally. The inferomedial border, as we have learnt already, is divided into two more parts, the medial orbital border and then if we see the posterior aspect, this is referred to as the medial occipital border. These are the two subdivisions of the inferomedial border. The entire inferior surface is divided into two distinct regions again by stem of the lateral surface. Okay? Now this is the stem of lateral sulcus, divides the entire, uh, entire inferior surface into an orbital area or orbital part, then posterior area which is referred to as tentorial part. The reason? This lies on the orbital plate in the anterior cranial fossa, whereas this lies on the tentorium cerebelli which is one of the dural point. Each part has few important sulci and gyri. The first important sulci you need to identify is the olfactory sulcus, which is the most anterior and the most medial sulcus present on the inferior surface. Fine. This lodges, what is the structure? Olfactory tract. The anterior most end is referred to as olfactory bulb. Fine. So again, uh, we will just see, this is what is referred to as? olfactory sulcus which lodges olfactory tract. The anterior most part of the olfactory tract is enlarged and that forms the olfactory bulb. You have a small gyrus present medial to the olfactory sulcus. This is referred to as rectus gyrus. Referred to so because it is straight. Fine. Rectus means straight, right? So this is gyrus rectus. Then the entire orbital lobe or the orbital surface is divided by this H-shaped sulci into an anterior part, a medial part, a lateral part and a posterior part. Fine. So this is the H-shaped sulci. Fine. Medial, anterior, lateral and posterior part. Done. Also referred to as the orbital sulci shaped orbital surface. Done? Then the tentorial surface has two important sulci and three important gyri. Okay? If you retract the part of the brain stem, can you see this sulcus? Fine. This sulcus is referred to as, what is the name given to this? Collateral sulcus. Fine. Then lateral to this, there is one more sulcus. This is referred to as temporo-occipital sulcus or occipitotemporal sulcus. Dividing the entire inferior surface tentorial part into three subdivisions. Okay? A lateral occipitotemporal gyrus, a medial occipitotemporal gyrus, and parahippocampal gyrus. Fine? Collateral sulcus occipitotemporal sulcus, the three gyrus, parahippocampal, the medial occipitotemporal and lateral occipitotemporal. Done. Apart from this, if you trace the anterior part of parahippocampal gyrus, can you see this U-shaped area? Right? This U-shaped area is what we refer to as uncus. Fine. Right? Parahippocampal gyrus, uncus, gyrus rectus, all these will form 
part of your limbic lobe. Are we clear with this? These are the important sulci and gyri you need to identify on the orbital surface. Apart from this, there are few structures which are collectively referred to as base of the brain. Now, these structures from anterior to posterior includes optic nerve, optic chiasma, then these are optic tracts, then behind the optic chiasma lies a diamond shaped area referred to as interpeduncular fossa. Fine. Now, let us try to identify what is interpeduncular fossa. Interpeduncular fossa is a diamond shaped area present in the base of the brain bounded by anteriorly optic chiasma, posteriorly upper margin of the pons, anterior laterally optic tract, posterior laterally crust cerebral. Fine. Uh, it is lot more clear in this specimen. Fine. You can see the interpeduncular fossa clearly now, right? Now, what are the contents of this? You, you see this uh, depressed area or uh, gap like structure, right? Now, this is where you will have the attachment of a structure called tuber cinerium. Fine. Tuber cinerium uh, gives rise to a stalk referred to as infundibulum or infundibular stalk. Fine. Behind this or posterior to this, you have what are these? You can see two uh, rounded structures, right? These are your mammillary bodies. Fine. Then posterior to the mammillary bodies, you have uh, area referred to as posterior perforated substance. Apart from this, the infundibular stalk uh, gives attachment to what gland? Pituitary. Fine. So you have the pituitary gland. These are the contents of interpeduncular fossa. Fine. The tuber cinerium and infundibular stalk and then pituitary gland. Then we have mammillary, mammillary bodies and then most posteriorly we have posterior perforated substance. During the formation of arterial circle of villus, even the posterior cerebral artery will form a content of interpeduncular fossa. Fine. Are we clear? So, we identified three important structures in the base of the brain. These are uh, the optic nerve, the optic chiasma, and the optic tract. And then we identified the interpeduncular fossa. Done? Then, posterior to the interpeduncular fossa, what is this structure? This is the pons. Fine? The ventral surface of the pons shows a midline groove and this midline groove is referred to as basilar groove which not just basilar artery right the lower margin of the pons becomes continuous with the medulla oblongata this is referred to as the pontomedullary junction right and this is the medulla oblongata this is the anterior median fissure, this is the pyramid, these are the pyramids, these are olives and these are inferior cerebellar peduncles. So this is regarding the structures forming base of the brain. Done? Fine. Now apart from all this, you should know what are the cranial nerves that are attached to the inferior surface of the brain. Again, we will come from anterior to posterior. The cranial nerves are numbered from 1 to 12 based on their attachment to the inferior surface of the brain. The first one as we can see here, this is the olfactory nerve. Then we have the optic nerve. Fine. Then posterior to this, all other cranial nerves are attached to the brainstem. And what does brainstem include? It includes midbrain, pons and medulla. The ventral part of the ventral part of the midbrain that you see here, these are the crust cerebri. Attached to the midbrain, we have two nerves. Attached to the ventral surface, we have oculomotor nerve. Arising from the dorsal surface, we have trochlear nerve. The peculiarity of trochlear nerve: 
this is the smallest of all the cranial nerves and this is the only cranial nerve that arises from the dorsal aspect of brain stem. Then the fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal nerve is attached to pons by means of two roots, a motor root and a sensory root. What is the major function of trigeminal nerve? Is it sensory or motor? Major function. Uh, sensory or motor? Sensory, because it forms the chief nerve supply of the face, right? So the sensory root is larger. The attachment of the trigeminal nerve is such that the medial root is attached, I'm sorry, the motor root is attached medial and the sensory root is attached laterally, but the sensory root is larger. And these are attached to the ventral surface of the uh, pons. Fine. Then, what is this area? Ponto medullary junction. Right? So, when we talk about ponto medullary junction, we have attachment of three cranial nerves here. Okay? The three cranial nerves are abducent medially, facial nerve in the middle, and vestibular cochlear nerve lateral. Similar to trigeminal nerve, even facial nerve will have two roots, motor root and sensory root. But the major function of facial nerve is motor innervation of the face, right? So here, motor root is larger. What about trigeminal nerve which is attached to the ventral surface of the pons? Sensory, sensory root is larger. But in both the case, the motor root lies medially. You can remember M for M. Medial is motor root. In case of trigeminal nerve, it is smaller. In case of facial nerve, it is larger. So, the most lateral nerve that is attached to pontomedullary medullary junction is the vestibulo cochlea. Right? Done? Then, the last four cranial nerves are attached to the medulla oblongata. Fine? What is this elevation? These are olives. Remember, the ventral surface of the medulla shows three elevations. This is the pyramids, these are the olives, and these are inferior cerebellar peduncles. Attached between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle, you have three nerves. These are the ninth, tenth, and eleventh cranial nerves. Glossopharyngeal, the cranial root of axillary, and then I'm sorry, uh, glossopharyngeal, vagus, and cranial root of axillary. Whereas between the olive and the pyramid, we have the attachment of rootlets of the hypoglossum nerve. Done? So, these are the cranial nerves that are attached to inferior cerebellum.